Georges-Auguste Cuthon was a French politician, Freemason and lawyer known for his service as a deputy on the Legislative Assembly during the French Revolution. Cuthon was elected to the Committee of Public Safety on 30 May 1793, serving with his friends and close associates Maximilien Robespierre and Louis Antoine de Saint Just during the Reign of Terror until his death in 1794. Cuthon played an important role in the development of the Law of 22 Prairial, which was responsible for sharply increasing the rate at which accused counter-revolutionaries were executed. Biography Background Cuthon was born on of December 1755 in Orsit in the province of Auvergne. His father was a notary and his mother was the daughter of a shopkeeper. Cuthon, like generations of his family before him, was a member of the lower bourgeoisie. Following in his father's footsteps, Cuthon became a notary, using his skills to serve on Auvergne's provincial assembly in 1787. His first experience in politics. He was well regarded by others as an honest, well-mannered individual. As the revolution grew nearer, Cuthon was quickly becoming a cripple, with both legs rapidly becoming completely paralyzed. While doctors diagnosed Cuthon with meningitis in 1792, Cuthon blamed his paralysis on the frequent sexual experiences of his youth, although he began treating his condition with mineral baths. He grew so weak by 1793 that he became confined to a wheelchair, which was driven by hand cranks via gears and is preserved in the Carnivalt Museum. His political aspirations took him away from Orsit and to Paris where he joined the Freemasons in 1790 in Clermont. While in Clermont, he became a fixture at its literary society, where he earned acclaim for his discussion on the topic of patience. In 1791, Cuthon became one of the deputies of the Legislative Assembly, representing Puy de Dome. Deputy in 1791, Cuthon traveled to Paris to fulfill his duty as a deputy to the Legislative Assembly. He then joined the growing Jacobin Club of Paris. He chose to sit on the left at the first meeting of the assembly, but soon decided against associating himself with such radicals as he feared they were, shocking the majority. He was a very proficient speaker, and there is evidence that he exploited his condition as a paraplegic in order to gain the ear of the assembly on issues he found important. In September 1792 Cuthon was elected to the National Convention. During a visit to Flanders, where he was treating his health, he met and befriended Charles-François de Mauriers, later writing praises of him to the Assembly, referring to him as a man essential to us. His relationship with de Mauriers caused Cuthon to briefly consider joining the Girondist faction of the Assembly. But after the Girondist electors of the Committee of the Constitution refused Cuthon a seat on the committee in October 1792, he would ultimately commit to the Montagnards and the inner group formed around Maximilien Robespierre, a man with whom he shared many opinions, especially on religious issues such as revolutionary dechristianization. Cuthon became an enthusiastic Montagnard supporter, often echoing their opinions. At the trial of King Louis XVI, he argued loudly against the Girondist request for a referendum, detailing in a pamphlet that in doing so, the general will of the populace was still being carried out. He would go on to vote for the death sentence without appeal. Following the trial, Cuthon would be elected to the Committee of Public Safety on 30 May 1793, where he would work closely with Robespierre and Louis Antoine de Saint Just in the planning of policy strategy and policing personnel. Three days after rising to this position, Cuthon was the first to demand the arrest of the prescribed Girondists preceding the trial. Leon growing unrest had been occurring in Leon in late February and early May. By 5 July 1793 the National Convention determined the city of Lyon to be in a state of rebellion, and by September the Committee of Public Safety decided to send representatives to Lyon to end the rebellion. Cuthon would be the representative that Lyon would surrender to on 9 October 1793. 
He was suspicious of the unrest in Lyon upon his arrival, and would not allow the Jacobins of the local administration to meet with one another, fearing an uprising. On 12 October 1793 the Committee of Public Safety would pass a decree which they believed would make an example out of Lyon. The decree specified that the city itself be destroyed. Following the decree, Cuthen established special courts that would supervise the demolition of the richest homes in Lyon, leaving the homes of the poor untouched. In addition to the demolition of the city, the decree dictated that the rebels and the traitors were to be executed. Cuthen had difficulty accepting the destruction of Lyon and proceeded slowly with his orders. Eventually he would find that he could not stomach the task at hand and by the end of October he would request the National Convention send a replacement. The Republican atrocities began after Cuthen was replaced on 3 November 1793 by Jean-Marie Collet d'Airbois, who would go on to condemn 1,880 Lyonnais by April 1794. Law of 22 Prairial following his departure from Lyon, Cuthen returned to Paris, and on 21 December was elected president of the convention. He contributed to the prosecution of the Ebertists and continued serving on the Committee of Public Safety for the next several months. On 10 June 1794 with the aid of Robespierre, Coven drafted the Law of 22 Prairial, which in the case of trials before the Revolutionary Tribunal deprived the accused of the aid of counsel or of witnesses for their defence, on the pretext of shortening the proceedings. According to the 22 Prairial, individuals accused of a crime would be taken to a revolutionary tribunal that would choose between two outcomes. The first would be innocence and the second would be death. Trials would quickly move through the tribunal because those on trial would not have access to an attorney nor would they be able to have witnesses speak on their behalf. Cuthen proposed the law without consulting the rest of the Committee of Public Safety, as both Cuthen and Robes Peer expected that the committee would not be receptive to the proposal. The convention raised objections to the measure, but Cuthen justified strengthening the revolutionary tribunals by arguing that the political crimes overseen by the tribunals were considerably worse than common crimes because the existence of free society is threatened. Cuthen also famously justified the deprivation of the right to a counsel by declaring that the guilty have no right for a counsel and the innocents do not need any. Robespierre assisted Cuthen in his arguments by subtly implying that any member of the convention that objected to the new bill feared being exposed as traitors to the Republic themselves. Both Cuthen and Robespierre would be seen as dictators because of their vehement defence of 22 Prairial, and popular opinion would turn against him in the coming weeks. The law passed and the rate of executions promptly rose. In Paris alone, compared to an average of five executions that was the norm two months earlier, 17 executions would take place daily during Prairial, with 26 occurring daily during the following month of Messidor. Between the passing of the law of 22 Prairial and the end of July 1794, 1,515 executions took place at the Place de la Revolution. More than half of the final total of 2,639 executions that occurred between March 1793 and August 1794. Thermidor During the crisis preceding the Thermidorian reaction, Cullen showed considerable courage, giving up a journey to Auvergne in order, as he wrote, that he might either die or triumph with Robespierre and liberty. Robespierre had disappeared from the political arena for an entire month because of a supposed nervous breakdown, and therefore did not realize the situation in the convention had changed. His last speech seemed to indicate that another purge of the convention was necessary, though he refused to name names. In a panic of self-preservation, the convention called for the arrest of Robespierre and his affiliates, including Cuthen, St. Justin Robespierre's own brother, Augustin Robespierre. Cuthen was guillotined on 10 Thermidor alongside Robespierre, although it took the executioner 15 minutes to arrange him on the board correctly due to his paralysis. Legacy 
Cuthern, during the course of the French Revolution, had transitioned from an undecided young deputy to a strongly committed lawmaker. Aside from his actions in Lyon, it is perhaps the creation of the 22 Prairial, and the number of individuals who would be executed due to the law, which has became his lasting legacy. Following the acceptance of Coven's new decree, executions increased from 134 people in early 1794 to 1,376 people between the months of June and July in 1794. The 22 Prairial also allowed tribunals to target noblemen and members of the clergy with reckless abandon, as the accused no longer could call character witnesses on their behalf of the victims executed during June and July 1794, 38% were of noble descent and 26 representing the clergy. More than half of the victims came from the wealthier parts of the bourgeoisie. Coven's lawmaking not only greatly increased the rate of executions across France, but also brought the terror away from mere counter-revolutionary acts and closer to social discrimination than ever before.